COVID-19 update is brought to you by Full Tech Systems. You'll come for the price, but stay for the service. And welcome back to Open Your Eyes. We're now moving into our first conversation for the morning, or should I say the second? We had one earlier. And this, of course, is our COVID-19 update, uh, COVID update. In with us, we have, uh, well, not in with us, but on the screen is Professor Clive Landis. He is the chairman of COVID-19 Task Force for UWI. Professor, a very pleasant Belizean morning to you, or Caribbean morning to you. A very pleasant Barbadian morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you know, it, it's taking the world by storm. It has taken the world by storm. And uh, here in the Caribbean, one of the things that we do is that we have conversations in how we're taking care of each other. Now, from UWI uh, and the task force, tell us, how is that going as we speak? Uh, as we okay. speak, yes. Um, thank you, John. So the University of the West Indies, I think... Uh, the Caribbean population knows that when there's a disaster, such as a hurricane, we would go in and we have a system to, to deal with emergencies. So for a hurricane, we would send in engineers to check the bridges and buildings and water experts and psychological counselors. So we have, since the Zika epidemic, we have, we're doing the same for um, uh, viral epidemics. So in 2016, I sat in this chair as the chair of the Zika task force. And we engaged uh, with the region to try and strengthen some of our, um, our responses. And that task force would have had maybe pediatricians and neurologists. Now this task force, of course, is different. Mm -hmm. So we would have um, critical care physicians. We would have um, uh, veterinary virologists because, of course, this um, is, is an animal um, virus that has jumped into the human population. Yeah. Um, and, and we have laboratory people and so um, the university does have a system and we step in uh, straight away. So we, we formed the task force on the 29th of um, uh, February and uh, I can share some of the uh, things that we've been doing. Sure, we, we'd love to hear that. Okay, uh, well, at the moment we're concentrating as our most Caribbean countries on the containment phase. So um, we're currently in the containment phase of the epidemic where we are looking for cases, we identify them in the laboratory, and then we do what's known as contact tracing, where we try to trace um, uh, persons who may have had contact with a case, and then uh, we try to um, isolate and contain and to treat uh, those persons who um, uh, have the case. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that um, in Belize, you've had uh, seven cases, um, uh, your epidemic is um, uh, still uh, quite young. Um, so um, what we are doing in the university is we are giving comparisons to international standards. So when you look at where your epidemic stands and you compare it, let's say, to Asian epidemics where we know that they have been able to contain this quite well, such as Singapore and South Korea. Yes. Belize is actually tracking Singapore and South Korea at this point of the epidemic quite closely. Um, there are other um, comparator countries like the UK and the US would have had more cases for the same length of time as Belize has had. Yeah. So, 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 you know, from, from the point of view, the standpoint of right now, yeah. um, the containment uh, is, 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 is going okay. And it's very important for the population to um, bring out their caring side and not to allow panic and fear to push us towards stigmatizing patients because no one is going to want to come forward yeah. to be identified as a case if they are stigmatized. And that, that would mean that people would come very sick where they're much more infectious and the epidemic can really take off. At the moment, the epidemic is still under control, yeah. uh, and uh, I think you need to do everything possible to, to keep it that way. So, Professor, just, just so I can get in some information here, we just uh, got confirmation of an eighth case um, in the north of the country, um, and he's a 50-year-old male. I just wanted to, to get that in because it is breaking news at this time. But it does bring into perspective something you just mentioned, 
um, when we look at what is expected in terms of an outbreak, I feel sometimes people or, or the public yearns for what would be the end, that this would be the final number. We stop at 8 or we stop at 10. But there is an actual that can be expected. It's just how fast or slow it would happen. How do you explain that to people? Right. Well, what you don't want to happen is an explosive epidemic. Yeah. This is quite a contagious uh, virus. And if you have a very rapid epidemic, there probably isn't a healthcare system in the world that could cope with it. Yeah. Um, so what you're trying to do is to have either containment, such as South Korea and Singapore essentially have contained the virus, or you have a slow epidemic, um, so that you know your your healthcare system can take care of patients and treat them and not be overwhelmed. Now, um, if the Caribbean countries did nothing in terms of um, these measures to slow transmission, we would all be moving rapidly towards um, a a full epidemic. Yes. However, the Caribbean countries have moved quickly. Actually moved body, and most of the countries have similar kind of lockdowns. Mm -hmm. And when you use the criteria which we have at the university to um, indicate whether the, Carib the Caribbean countries have moved early or late, all of them have moved early, and so that's a good thing. Um, so the fact that you're under lockdown is for a reason. It's because we're trying to flatten that epidemic curve so that it pushes through the population more, more gradually and that the healthcare system can cope. Okay. Now, we had the, and, and perhaps that was uh, part of the silver lining of, of the process, because where we saw the pandemic spreading in China and Europe and now the United States, we had the benefit of learning from uh, good things that they did and clearly some of the effective practices. Um, you speak of the Caribbean reacting fast. Um, what, what does that mean? Is it the early lockdown phases that we're seeing? Yes, uh, both, both aspects. The containment um, is actually working relatively well in almost uh, all Caribbean countries. And that really hinges on one thing, and it hinges on the laboratory tests. Yes. And you know, in Belize and in other countries, we're just speaking about the labs in a very matter-of-fact way about, oh, you know, uh, we tested 41 people after the person who died. Mm -hmm. And they did that in one day. I mean, that is actually, you know, literally world-class standard. Yes. The test that is being done in Belize is the German test um, uh, recommended by the WHO. The laboratory has been trained by the Pan American Health Organization, and they are running this test to a professional standard. Yeah. And we should take a moment to understand that the Caribbean has never had this virus testing capacity before. Yes. This is the first time that we've had eight Caribbean countries, including Belize, mm -hmm. being able to test for viruses like this. Wow. Yeah. And so, you know, the previous epidemics that we've had, you know, we had the so called swine flu. Mm -hmm. um, a H1N1 in 2009, mm -hmm. and then we had chikungunya in 2013, and Zika in 2016. Mm -hmm. And every time our testing has become a little bit better, right now we have the best testing that, we've, that we have ever had for a virus. So that gives the containment a chance, it gives it a chance. So what's needed now is really the support of the population that cases should be feel free to come forward. Yeah. because. The the quicker we can see you, the quicker we can treat you. And then we can we can contact trace, we can trace people that you come into contact with and contain the epidemic. It can be contained. Yeah. South Korea, Taiwan, Japan, um, Singapore have all shown that it can be contained. Yeah. And even if we don't contain it, we must at least try to slow it so that it doesn't overwhelm our healthcare system. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things that uh, uh, the world continue to talk about when it comes to COVID is there is always that peak. There is a peak. You're in Barbados. Uh, I think you mentioned uh, during the commercial break somewhere around 66 or 68 cases. You're in a yeah, 60, 63 cases. Okay, and you're in a you're in a 24 hour lockdown. Is that working well? Do you think that you you guys have seen the peak there in Barbados? No. Um, uh, so. 
I believe that um, we are testing a lot. So when you look at the proportion of tests uh, in the Caribbean, Barbados would be amongst the highest testing. So I'm quite pleased about that. It means that we're finding cases. And when you look at the 63, thus far, as, as we speak, there has not been a case yet where there wasn't some linkage to travel from an affected area or to another known case. Oh. And so this is actually a good sign because it means that you're testing a lot, you're finding the cases and you're containing the epidemic. Um, but uh, I, I don't really know how this is all going to play out um, in the Caribbean. I suspect you might see both extremes. I suspect that when this is all done, you might see one country that had a completely uh, intense epidemic that just went through the population, and yeah. you might have another that has contained it completely and everything in between. Yeah. Well, you, you, you mentioned um, that you don't know, and I think that that's perhaps the hardest part of uh, the public's, um, in the messaging going out to the public, because it is a novel virus, and we're only three going on four months into understanding and running tests and doing the research. And so when there's uncertainty, people tend to be more fearful. Um, right. what, what is the, the mindset there in Barbados? We, we here in Belize, I think people are, we're on day seven of our state of emergency and quarantine. And I think there's a mix between fear, complacency, and, and, and some stigma as well for, for people mm -hmm. who've tested positive. What is the experience yeah. like there? Um, I think the experience shifted in Barbados when we had our first um, uh, serious case um, and then the first death. Mm -hmm. I think that shifts the mindset from, it's almost like a theoretical exercise about, oh, this virus is coming and we're preparing for it and this and that. And then you have, you know, a, a personal tragedy, someone dies. Yeah. And I think that makes it very real. And then I think there is another shift in the mindset. Um, but what uh, uh, your listeners should be aware of is that, you know, this is not with a high fatality rate. This, yeah. you know, we're, we're all going to get through this. Yeah. Yes. By and large. So the mortality rate is not really determined. Yeah. Um, we suspect it will be around 1% or possibly less in population. Mm -hmm. uh, but the difficulty of this virus is that because it presents with, um, in, in severe cases with pneumonia, it will place a very intense pressure on your hospital system. And you've seen that mm -hmm. in New York, in London, in Italy, in Spain, in the UK. It really puts a lot of pressure on your um, healthcare system. Yeah. So the, the, we have to do everything we can at the beginning to try to limit the spread. And I must re-emphasize that if confidence is broken in the process of when patients become cases, that's a disaster because it's unfair on the patient. This is someone who should be having our compassion, not our stigma. Yeah. Um, and, and it will prevent people from coming forward and that will cause the disease to spread. So really it's in everyone's own personal interest mm -hmm. to really let a compassionate side come out. Yeah. These are people who could be our relatives and we would like to see them receive good care and love and treatment and 99% will survive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, uh, let us not um, you know, get everything out of proportion. Mm -hmm. we, we understand how important it is for folks to go and test, to, to go and get that testing or get testing, get, te get tested actually, um, last for words here. But uh, Professor, what would be your advice in terms of people to go on out there and uh, get tested? At what point would you, would you, would you advise this? Should you, uh, summarize firstly the people that you've been around with or if I feel like I have a flu should I go in and get tested what's your advice on that no uh, <laughs> the the process is different for a disease like this yeah. um, as, as your ministry has um, indicated you should not go to your doctor you should not go to your clinic and say give me a test if you feel you have symptoms you yeah. should call the helpline mm -hmm. absolutely and, and, and the helpline um, would then manage where you go to get tested yeah. so that people are not taken unawares that here is someone who potentially 
is contagious. And you know, you might be in a room, in a small polyclinic or in a private doctor's office, and you know, they might not know how yeah. to cook. That there is a helpline, a hotline that that you have in Belize, yeah. and you should call them, and then they would um, assess your symptoms and direct you for testing if it's necessary. Yeah. We heard from... That's, um, that's in fact, I do want to get that in. That is in fact the, the standard here that we are asked not to go to the clinics, that we should call the, the hotline that's right. um, that's before right. presenting at any healthcare institution. In case you don't know, our hotline is 0800 MOH CARE. You can call from any part of the country. Yes. But let's let's talk about what the university is doing. Because in fact, yes. it, it is um, prestigious for uh, not just its education, but also the research that is done. There's, there's the medical um, school as well. Is there sure. any work taking place in the Caribbean to look at what our reality is, or looking at even treatments or vaccines sure. for the Caribbean? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Um, OK. so. Uh, We've already completed some work. So the Ministry of Health in Trinidad asked our experts to go through all of the treatments uh, which are available and to produce a recommendation, which we did, and we did that in five days. Um, now, in terms of new treatments, because as you know, there are actually no recommended treatments at the moment, the university is par participating in the World Health Organization's solidarity trial. This is a mega trial. Mm. It will be, end up being the biggest clinical trial in the world, mm -hmm. and we are participating with our patients in the Caribbean as well. Okay. And what does this trial include, and, and where? It's going to look at novel treatments, and um, so it will include the one which has been in the news, uh, hydroxychloroquine, um, and it will involve a few other treatments which are already approved. The yes. reason that we would be looking for antiviral agents that are already approved mm -hmm. is that the process is much quicker because they're already approved. Yes. for a clinical purpose. So you don't have to start from scratch with a new compound that you know nothing about. Um, there is already, for example, safety data available for these compounds. And so um, these combination of known anti antivirals um, uh, are going to be tested in this global clinical trial. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the pr um, preliminary questions I think everyone keeps asking is, when will this end? And all we can do is watch the international media to get some of that perspective. But it is going to be a bit different for us here in this region, simply because we're late to the game. Is that the case? Yes. Um, so there are two. There are two factors. Yes, it is the case. So 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 our region was in the it, the last in the third wave. So you had the first wave in Asia, the second wave in Europe and North America, the third wave in the Caribbean and South America, and it simply has to do with the fact that we don't have direct flights to China. So we had that filter of people coming through Canada, through US, through UK, where they would have been picked up the first cases. And only when our own source markets started having high burdens of disease, like the US, like um, UK, then it became imported to the Caribbean. Yeah. So we were in the last um, wave. However, because the Caribbean countries are very small, our history of epidemics, when you look at swine flu, when you look at chikungunya, when you look at Zika, they go through our country very quickly because we have small countries. Mm -hmm. um, and so whereas Zika might have taken three years to go from province to province to province in Brazil, it just went right through uh, the Caribbean countries in the space of a few months. So, um, <laughs> but remember where I started this conversation, I don't want this to happen. Yes. I don't want this virus to just burst into our population and then cause a lot of trauma um, uh, and fatalities in our hospital system. Oh, I'm sorry. There Are goes my peacock. Um, <laughs> you warned us, just, in, in all fairness. Just in case anyone is wondering what that is, that is a peacock. Um, so, so we really, the measures that we're taking right now, the emergency measures, um, they are designed to cut down person-to-person um, -person transport mission by about 75 percent. If we can succeed in doing that, that will flatten the epidemic curve and make it manageable. Yes. So what you're saying is, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the longer we are under these types of restrictions, 
the better the healthcare system and the health of the nation fares mm -hmm. off versus having well, that's yes the healthcare system yes but you know everyone is very aware that yeah. um, the health of the nation is going to be suffering in other ways um, from you know not being in employment maybe not having a wage maybe having struggling with um, you know making ends meet um, you know there are obviously psychological impacts uh, from uh, being uh, confined to home and having restrictions of movement the impact on the economy we are all aware that these are, are exceptional measures mm -hmm. and they must be calibrated so um, in Europe the first countries are coming out of their um, uh, lockdown phase and you know they would look and see well how is our healthcare system coping so Austria is making the determination the healthcare system is coping okay the epidemic is still going but they're coping okay we're going to reopen um, uh, so I think that decision is now pending yeah. and then you can get the economy moving again so it is possible that you may see this being eased and then being imposed again yeah. um, until the population basically gradually um, uh, generates immunity to this virus yeah. so um, it is very unlike anything we've ever experienced before Absolutely. Yeah. and these measures are necessary to prevent the kind of really traumatic um, uh, collapse of the hospital systems that you have seen in, in certain uh, places, in particularly in in Europe, yes. nobody wants to see that here. Yeah, and 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 we simply know um, we have to gauge as well the the level of healthcare that we do already have from before mm -hmm. the introduction of this novel virus. Um, right. It, in yeah, so 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 the, so the university is assisting in this as well. The Caribbean um, uh, Disaster and Emergency Management Agency, uh, so Belize is a, a member. They have asked us, the university, to conduct um, uh, epidemic projections and needs analyses for all countries in the region. This is very very new um, analysis. We uh, we we um, uh, completed it just on Monday. And the governments are going to be um, uh, ingesting this information, and it will help in the planning uh, for what the capacity is of um, uh, acute beds and critical care beds in each country, and um, how many patients, you know, in a best and worst case scenario, you might expect. Yeah. Yeah. When are we going to expect uh, some of this information to be released? Uh, well, it's being managed through the Caribbean uh, Disaster and Emergency Management Agency. Okay. So, so they have their own um, in-country um, uh, members, and you know this is all um, sensitive information, and it's being uh, it's being disseminated um, through through Sedema. What other type of support are we, um, especially for Belize, uh, can we expect uh, from uh, the University of West Indies in this uh, mm -hmm. task force? Sure. Um, well, we also, of course, um, are an educational institution, not just yes. a research institution. And you would know, I'm sure, that um, uh, Louis Longsworth, the principal of the Open Campus, um, uh, uh, has a Belizean background. In fact, she was installed in Belize City, um, I think, five years ago. That's right. And um, so, you know, you, you have the advantage of having the uh, principal of the leading uh, online learning university mm -hmm. uh, is, 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 is uh, closely linked to your country. Yeah. So the Open Campus has been helping educators in the region. Um, so currently the Open Campus of the university has trained 600 educators how to place uh, material um, online. And they're also a member of the Commonwealth um, of Learning, uh, again, because of their expertise in being able to uh, 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 deliver teaching and assessment online. So they are really, um, I think, taking a prominent role in the educational um, uh, sector, particularly the, the higher education sector. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I got, we, I'm, I'm getting the, uh, I got the ability now to tell you that today is Dr. Longsworth's birthday. And so we, birthday. Wish, we wished the happy birthday earlier. But one of the things that, that comes to mind, especially over COVID-19 and the Caribbean, is that we bank 
for the most part on tourism. And it, it definitely yeah. is, a, is a big damper on the economy. Yeah. Have the UWI yeah. task force look at any other way yes. that we could benefit, yes, we especially do. in time? Yes, so yeah. Can you tell us we about have, that, please? We have the chair of the, um, uh, of the Bahamas um, Hospitality and Tourism Institute. So that's where the UWI uh, aggregates its expertise. So the director of that institute, Michelle McLeod, um, she is on the task force, and we also have um, uh, other persons um, uh, on the task force in, from Cave Hill who have expertise um, in uh, international relations. And so we are, at the moment, you know, uh, we are really running what are called simulations because we don't really yet know how long this is going to go on. Yeah. The best yeah. guess, the best guess is that. This is going to go on until about August. We might have a quiet time in September and October, and then could start up again in, in November. That's the best guess. Um, this is one of these things where you know you uh, say it on TV, and then it will come back to haunt you. But I'm I'm quite happy to do <laughs> what my um, uh, you know best guess is. Yeah. Um, and so up to until you actually reach the end of this and flights resume, yeah. uh, all you can really do is, is, is run simulations. And that's what we're doing. We're running simulations for two different kinds of countries, those in the Caribbean, which would be very tourism dependent, and those which are very resource um, uh, exporting, so uh, exporting uh, oil and minerals, etc., to try and sort of uh, model what could be the impact. Mm -hmm. It is going to be significant. Of course, of course. Just my, my final question, uh, Professor, is, is looking at what's taking place in the entire region. So, of course, the University of West Indies looks at what's happening in the Caribbean. Um, but in the case of Belize and Guyana and Suriname, uh, we have or attachments to uh, the mainland Americas. And it's critical to pay attention to what's happening there. What's the implication or what's the level of monitoring that you have in looking at how Central or South America handles um, their outbreaks as well and the impact on the Caribbean? Yeah, we, we have focused really on the Caribbean because the Caribbean is a lacuna of information and we feel it is our duty, particularly the English speaking um, member countries who contribute to the university. This is our constituency and because there is a shortage of information, um, for the Caribbean, we have been prioritizing that. However, we do have um, a number of, um, and we, we are part of a number of um, uh, uh, coalitions. Um, so, uh, there's a coalition of um, universities, I think there are 12, uh, which are all Caribbean universities, except for the University of Miami and the University of the West Indies. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, all of them are South American. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is a, a coalition that we're working with. It's coordinated out of the University of Miami. Um, uh, their um, director is uh, Julio Frank, um, and uh, he's put together this coalition and we work with them. We also have bilateral um, uh, ties with the various universities across South America, um, such as in uh, Colombia, Brazil, um, we also have ties with uh, Cuba. Um, so we're working with, but that is not our immediate priority. We've only been in existence for just over a month. Our immediate priority is the English-speaking Caribbean and the Caribbean countries, including Haiti. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I, I guess the transmission breaks is an indicator that we are out of time, are we? Yeah. <laughs> but we do appreciate you taking the time this morning to share what the task force is doing. Clearly, there's quite a bit of research that is ongoing, and we, we look forward to having that information coming out and understanding it, most importantly, from a Caribbean perspective. Yes, and I'm very happy uh, if you wish to have me on again. And uh, I would like to end um, uh, by assuring you that um, uh, together we will get through this. That's right. right. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Professor. You're very welcome. And uh, with that, actually, we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we'll be back in a few. Stay tuned. COVID-19 Update was brought to you by Full Tech Systems. You'll come for the price, but stay for the service.